This animal is a wallaby, which is a small kangaroo-like animal. The owner of the wallaby is concerned because it has not been eating. We plan to do a CT scan on the wallaby to see what's going on with its mouth. The jaw seems to be swollen, so we are passing gas into the wallaby using a face mask, while one technician holds it and another administers the gas. When administering gas through a mask like this, initially it feels good, but later the animal realizes it's losing control of its functions and goes through a panic stage. Melinda, our stem cell liaison, is assisting with this, and this short panic stage will lead to anesthesia necessary for the CT scan. The CT scan reveals that the wallaby has lumpy jaw disease, an infection common in cattle but not necessarily in kangaroos or wallabies. The images come slice by slice. Each slice is 2 mm thick, providing a detailed view through the head, which is then rendered into images that can be viewed in both 3D and 2D. While the entire head is scanned, today we are particularly concerned with the left jawbone. After the scan, the image is initially viewed in black and white and set up to be symmetrical so that one side can be compared with the other. On the screen, we can see the teeth, upper teeth, eye sockets, and nasal passages of the wallaby. Notably, on the left jaw, visible on the right-hand side of the screen, there is a distinct bone structure resembling a D shape, surrounded by what appears to be pus in the jawbone. The image can now be rendered in three dimensions, allowing us to rotate and examine not only the damaged bone but also other structures such as the skull, trachea, larynx, and vertebral bodies, aiding in our surgical planning. The wallaby will now be moved to the surgery room, where we plan to culture the infection and insert a drain tube through the infected area to promote healing in place. Although the infection in the jaw is resistant to most antibiotics, it can be treated with intravenous and topical iodine. Dr. Garner is examining the wallaby, evaluating its jaw and determining the surgical approach. The surgical site is shaved, cleaned, and scrubbed. This is indeed an abscess. The surgical pack is opened and a sterile drape is placed over the area, exposing only the jawbone for Dr. Garner to work on. Using a curette, we remove the infected tissue and use forceps to open the location for the Penrose drain. Once the opening is made, the technician flushes betadine iodine solution into the infected area. The drain tube, made of latex rubber, is placed both above and below the infected site, ensuring thorough flushing of disease material from the area. After surgery, the wallaby will recover from anesthesia and be sent home.